The bulk of the build, I believe, is in the first two videos. So at this point, you're going to be seeing stuff like the cabinet fronts, as well as making the drawer and um, the drawer front as well. And probably a lot of veneering. There was a ton of veneering on this project, and I absolutely hate veneering. But um, And then the rest of it will mostly be the finish. The finish I chose for this was Armor Seal um, Satin. The satin was chosen by the customer. The armor seal was chosen by me. And I'll get more in depth in the video of, of why I chose that. But this should be a pretty, pretty self-explanatory, straightforward third video, like most of mine are, because the third video usually details the finishing process. And I don't make a ton of changes from what I prefer to do in finishing. So I'm gonna start this off by working on the door fronts for the cabinet. So I had a couple chunks of this walnut left and I'm just cutting them down to rough size. I use pennies as the spacer for the reveal on, on inset panels now. It's just an easy way to do to get a sixteenth of an inch reveal. Um, with this I'm going to be adding uh, edge banding on the edge of these. It doesn't add a huge amount of thickness to the pieces. So I've done enough of these that I take my measurements and I usually rough cut these to just about exact size. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll add edge banding to two edges and then trim this down if it needs trimming and then get it to my final size. So these are my two, two blanks. You can see now I'm adding edge banding to the bottoms and then to one side so then I'll already have pretty much the thickness I need and then I can mock it in place and um, make sure it fits. I use an edge banding iron just because I have one. Sometimes I actually use a real iron because I sometimes feel like it goes a little bit faster. The, this is the hardware I'm using. These are soft close inset hinges. You could always tell an inset hinge from other hinges because it has a very large crank in it, which is what my finger is pointing out. I say that just because these are notoriously um, misplaced in in stores i've definitely gone there grabbed a pack of what i thought were inset hinges because they're in the bay and they're not so now i always double check and the stores by me don't always have them in stock but i had to go to the home depot i usually go to lowe's and they had them and i prefer uh, blum hardware for most things but this company i don't know if i've ever used them before to be perfectly honest but i like them and they're they're cheaper than getting them online so that worked out nicely so you could see in that last clip, I was just showing you um, where the doors mar uh, hit according to that pencil mark. And I just had to take a sliver off of each one and then they pretty much fit into place. So then I can mount these hinges. Um, you have to drill the hole for the cup in the back. Luckily, these are pretty much universal. So I have a jig that I use for this. And um, you could freehand it, but I usually do it on the drill press, and it just kind of lines everything up nicely for you. You're marking um, the center mark for the Fostner bit, and then you're marking um, where the, the screws will go. It's just drilling to the top of that bit is flush with the panel. And this bit came, came in a kit and then I can use those marks to align where the screw holes are going to go and then attach these as well. So these hinges I like because the mounting clips actually have a slotted hole. The Blum ones is usually a cir circular hole, so there's really no up to down um, adjustments on those. With these with the slotted hole, you have an up to up down adjustment, which I prefer. So then I'll mock everything in place with pennies to get the reveal I want. I can go on the inside, mark where those holes are with a pencil, pre-drill them and attach them. Now the instructions will tell you um, where to mount these. You can measure from the face of the cabinet back. You can do that. I just find it's easiest to mock them in place and do it this way. I very rarely have to go back and make adjustments. They usually turn out perfectly um, doing it this way. So then I can just put everything in there and then they close. Now these are obviously going to close past the face of the cabinet, but once I add the two um, inner rails to this cabinet, and then I don't think I show it in the video, but I accounted for adding a little rubber bumper and then these sat perfectly flush with the, the face of the cabinet. And that is what that looks like. 
So you can see how they're kind of pushed back now, but at the end of the day, they'll, they'll be flush with the front. So then to uh, put the holes in this for the adjustable shelf, um, there's jigs for this. I just have always used pegboard. I use the drill bit that they recommend for, for the, the mounts, and then I just drill a series of holes and it's pretty self-explanatory. And then you have all your adjustments there. This is a pretty small cabinet. I mounted this panel in the middle. They'll probably never adjust it. So at this point I was running out of walnut, so I decided to use maple veneer ply for the shelf. I also don't think I filmed this, but I stained this with a walnut stain so it would match a little bit better. And then I put walnut edge banding on the outside so it, you could barely tell that it's a different species of wood. And it just saved the customer a ton of money. Instead of ordering an entire another sheet of plywood just for a shelf, I could use scrap I had around the shop. So then I cut and mounted the inner rails. These are about three quarters of an inch wide by about um, an inch deep. You can see I'm going to clamp those in place. And then, like I said, this should make it so that cabinet won't... Um, won't bow over time and I also calculated it so it's set back enough that the doors close nicely on it like I said so it acts as a stop as well. So then for the drawer I started making um, for the desk I started making the drawer once again I'm using uh, birch veneer ply because I don't have any walnut anymore. Um, it's a very skinny drawer we went for leg space over over desk space Really all they wanted to put in there was a laptop and some file folders, so it didn't really matter anyway. But you could see I just cut my pieces down to width. And then I'm going to do one big dove dovetail in the front to attach it to the face of the cabinet, which is what I'm doing now. And then I could do all these cuts on the table saw. So it's usually a 10 degree tilt I do. And then I can cut the shoulders and everything and clean them up on the table saw because this is just the inside of a, of a cabinet. So once I had the tails, I could go through and mark it on the front of my panel, the pins. And then this I mostly do um, with a handsaw. As you can see, just marking, marking the depth. And then I could saw down. Dovetails is something I don't do a ton, so I do like the practice. Every time I do them, it gets a little bit easier, a little bit quicker to do, which, which is nice. And then I could just saw down to my marks. Now this I'm using the, Bl the Blum undermount drawer hardware and um, shipping this time of year is such a pain, so these actually didn't come yet. But once again, I've made enough of these, these drawers that I knew the measurements that I needed and I made it without having, having the cabinet hardware to work with yet. I chose the undermount drawers because I like not seeing the hardware. Um, I find them easier to mount. They're a little more expensive, but I do find them easier to mount. And this is a pretty wide drawer and I, I find there's less flex in the undermount slides than the side to side slides on doors getting closer to to three, three feet wide. And then that's how everything fits in there nicely. So I obviously did this on both sides. And then I could go through and add a quarter inch groove on the bottom, which will accept the panel for the bottom of this drawer. And then I could cut a three quarter inch dado on the back and that will hold the backer. So on these, they recommend notching it out. What I do is I just have the backer not go all the way through the panel. So you can see I'm cutting down. I cut all my pieces in the beginning, but the backer's not as thick. Because the on undermount slides, that bottom panel has to be mounted a half inch up from the bottom. So you'll see there's a space in the back and it completely um, alleviates having to notch out the back of your drawer. This is how I make cabinets anyway, so it's just kind of an added bonus. It makes it easier to mount those. So for the front of this cabinet, like I said, I was low on plywood, so I used that lock miter bit to kind of splice these two pieces together. Um, once it was finished and, and all said and done, it was very hard to tell, so I was happy about that. So then the hardware, the poles that are going on the front of this, I'm also making. I have some scrap walnut. I went through and I put a chamfer on it, but it wasn't enough of an angle. So I just used um, my table saw to, to make a little bit of a steeper degree angle. 
and this is this is pretty much copied from the photo it's just an angled angled door pole and instead of buying them it was just easier to make them and they're rounded over on the edges very simple so the other reason I was fine with splicing that plywood together is you'll see that the pole for the the door goes across the entire front of the piece so it really kind of hides that that anyway so then like I said armor seal satins going on here um, I really like this finish. I've been using water locks a lot lately because I've been doing um, surfaces like tabletops where I prefer water locks, but I love this finish. It's very easy to apply. I put on about four coats on the surfaces you see the most. I started by, by doing this on the ground because this is tall enough in my shop that it, it pretty much brushes the ceiling. And then I ended up putting it back into place because it was easier to do it that way. Um, the only thing that kind of stinks about the armor seal was once again this time of year it's a real pain getting stuff shipped and the gallon of this is about 50 bucks but I ended up having to go to Woodcraft to get it because I couldn't get it shipped and they didn't have a gallon so I had to buy quartz and two quartz was about 50 bucks and I, I hate it when that happens. So then um, as th I was working on all of this kind of in tandem so as that was drying I can then at this point I had the hardware and I glued glued the the drawer together because just in case I, I mocked it up wrong it's much easier to make changes when it's not glued together and then on the bottom on wider drawers I like to put a center piece so that that bottom can't sag once again there's a dovetail on the front and then I could attach that the inner panel of this was usually what I use is, is quarter inch ply but I didn't have any but I had this kind of uh, wainscoting faux finish MDF panel which actually looked pretty nice it saved me a trip to the store and it was scrap so it didn't cost the customer anything and then once the the drawer box is square I could put a couple brads in it and, and let it set up overnight so like I said you could see I didn't have to notch out the back for the backer I just I just kind of punched those in place it leaves a mark and then I could drill the hole for that backer for the fronts I just pre-drill and attach those as well. I know they make jigs for these, but I, I haven't found I've needed them. So then I can mount these in, in the desk. I tried using this little little driver because the problem with this desk being so skinny is, is my, my drill didn't fit in there, but the driver didn't really have enough oomph, so I ended up hand screwing most of these uh, piece uh, screws into, into the piece. But on the test fit of the drawer, I was really happy it, it worked perfectly. So I just have to add the front to it. Put a little little um, super glue on there that didn't really hold it, but it was enough to still line it up. And then I'll sink a couple screws to the front and to the backer. And then now I could finally attach um, the long pole. You could see that how long that pole is. It, it hides that seam in the plywood really well. Um, at this point, all this stuff has one or two coats of armor seal on it, but like I said, I was waiting on the hardware before I could finish all this up. So I let that set, and then I just uh, pre-drilled, because this is pretty thin thin lumber at this point, pre-drilled through the back and then into that handle. And then you can see I already have the screws in, in the drawer box from where I, where I originally had it drilled in, and I can just use those to realign it. Uh, back where it was and then drill that together and then then that drawer box is is essentially finished you can see I'm, I'm just lining up where those marks originally were and I could tack this back into place make sure it fits this is inset once again obviously and then uh, more veneering more veneering on the top of this this time I'm using maple because the drawer box is maple the only uh, downside to making these boxes out of plywood, especially with the dovetails, is, is you do essentially see the ply edges and a little bit on the pins. So then the customer wanted one of these electrical sockets in the tabletop, which I think is a nice addition to any piece of furniture. So before I put the final coat of finish on this, I just um, cut out a slot for that. Usually I use a jigsaw for this, but recently I've been using my oscillating my oscillating tool in order to do all this sort of stuff. It just gives a really nice cut and a really nice finish. So I'm just going through and doing all that. You can see at least usually with with the jigsaw it kind of chews up the edges a little bit. 
this leaves a nice a nice clean edge and this will fit in a place and obviously plug in um, at their at their home so just mock this in place and I'll take it out in order to finish doing the cabinet so after the first coat I go through very lightly my sander is set to the lowest setting so it's not spinning super fast with 220 grit sandpaper and I just kind of go over everything smooth it out I'll apply the second coat and then after that I usually switch to 300 or 400 grit sandpaper and I'll then I'll put on another coat and then after that I'll keep it at 400 grit sandpaper and then all the surfaces you see I put another coat on there so this at the end of the day got about four coats So once the uh, desk was fully put together, it was quite heavy. So what I did, even though it's not in the drawing, what I decided to do was notch out um, a bit on the on this, and then I added a cleat to this. So the, the desk essentially sits on a cleat. I was nervous over time with just having, even if I put a bolt through here of this, of this coming undone, and it was nice, the cleat, you can't really see it from photos because it's so low and below the desk. So that was my biggest fear that you would see this cleat. So I'm just using, um, I believe this is an inch and a quarter bit to kind of remove the bulk of this material to make mortising this out a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to add a piece of walnut in here so it's cut down to size. So this all at this point, I'm still in the finishing process. So that was also kind of a pain because you inevitably scratch the stuff up. So there is that cleat. And then I'll just chamfer the edges and, and finish that up. So this is applying at this point. When I get to like the fourth coat, what I do is I put on a very, very thin coat. So it dries really quick and the chances of all the dust in my shop getting caught in this finish is much smaller. I also do all of this is the last thing I do before I leave for the day so that I'm leaving the shop and not kicking up dust. Big pieces of furniture like this with a clear coat, it's, it's, it's a challenge in a shop like this, but the, the finish on this turned out really nice. And I account some of that to the fact that armor seal is just a great, great finish. I originally was thinking of trying to do a water-based finish because I was thinking it would be much easier to spray this. Um, I th contemplated it for honestly a couple weeks, but I finally decided on the oil-based finish. I just prefer them, and I'm happy I did. It wasn't that much of a pain to do all this by hand. And then that's just the soft close of the drawer, the soft close on the cabinets, and the cabinet tops obviously got the same, same poles. That's probably the day before it was installed took come some last minute photos and then I got some photos in the customer's house and this is what it looks like installed so this is my last big install for 2020 and it was nice to get it done